My name is Quindai Chinyenze. Today I'm going to talk to you about what we have in stock, reviewing the current status on products to address HIV prevention. Significant progress has been made in the reduction of new HIV infections. As of 2020, UNAIDS tells us that there are 1.5 million new infections. This was against a target of 500,000. Significantly more work needs to be done to be able to reach our goal in the coming years. We know that the HIV epidemic is diverse globally with regional differences in incidence and the populations that are affected. We see that among female sex workers, men who have sex with men and transgender people, that these, these are, they are disproportionately affected by HIV, sometimes facing up to 30 times higher risk of HIV acquisition than the general population. When you look at adolescents and we see the infections that are coming out of these populations, six out of seven uh, new infections in adolescents are actually among girls much more significant than their male counterparts. Thankfully, we have an expanding HIV prevention toolbox that has come a long way since the years of the three pillared ABC, abstain, be faithful and use condoms. Now we have a range of tools that are able to address various populations and can be used in various combinations to be tailor-made for the different populations. Whether you're looking at prevention of mother to child transmission, or you're looking at prevention HIV infection in people who use, who inject drugs. Looking at voluntary medical male circumcision, this is one uh, tool that is a one-time measure and offers lifelong protection. We see, we have seen data that shows 60% reduction in heterosexual transmission of HIV from women to men. And as the goal that was set in 2016, that was looking at uh, attaining 25 million additional circumcisions by 2020. What we have reached is 15 million by the year 2020. We, we continue to see challenges in the rollout of programs such as this. And one of the challenges that came out in the uh, voluntary medical male circumcision programs is a challenge as related to reaching men at higher risk of HIV. And some of the reasons that were raised are around fear of pain, low risk perception, and low support um, from partners. And this does impact um, the ability of men to seek out some of these tools. Turning our attention to PrEP, this has been very topical over the past few years. Kate Segal reported an HIV R4P that 1 million, there have been 1 million PrEP initiations in 2020. And this is very encouraging to see a, a rising trend in oral PrEP use. Unfortunately, this is only 30% of the target of 3 million that was set by UNAIDS for 2020. And whilst we see uh, positive trends in places such as London and Europe in terms of uptake of PrEP, in Sub-Saharan Africa, we continue to see low uptake in young and mobile populations, as well as female sex workers and women at risk. We are also learning and, and continuing to, to see that adherence to daily pill taking is a challenge for many individuals. Uh, for example, in a cohort in Kenya, uh, when measuring by dried blood spots, it was noted that less than 15% of men who have sex with men who were reporting PrEP use had protective levels um, that were equivalent to, a, to greater than or equal to four tablets a week. When we're also looking at PrEP delivery, it is really critical to ensure that the models need to be um, well considered to support high uptake and persistence in the various populations. For example, community-based deliveries that really bring the PrEP as close as possible to the users are, are appearing to be um, more successful in supporting PrEP use and adherence, including the use of peer uh, support models in either counseling or the delivery of PrEP. When you're looking at adherence, several factors have been reported um, in literature, um, including uh, staff fear of stigmatization, um, you know, the side effects of PrEP, and these continue to come up as reported across different populations. In this slide, we see data that's coming from different populations, whether it's men who have sex with men, 
female sex workers, adolescent, girls and young women across the world and the challenges that they're experiencing in terms of uptake and adherence to PrEP. And we're continuing to learn how we can improve um, this HIV prevention tool going forward. So when looking at the next generation of PrEP options and how these can be informed by lessons learned, we have realized that we need products that are long acting to be able to mitigate adherence challenges that continue to be reported. We need products that can support discrete use and that have improved side effect profiles and are able to support reproductive health needs of women. Additionally, PrEP needs to be delivered within a holistic intervention, acknowledging the other needs of the target population. And this is the way that we can maximize acceptability in these groups. The cost of goods is critical and products need to be cost effective and affordable for governments to be able to procure them for their citizens. And some of the issues that we are seeing, whether related to long acting injectable carbotegravir or daily oral prep, there's a, re a recognition that we need to have improvements in diagnostics to be able to address the HIV testing needs in the context of PrEP. When we're looking at the next generation of PrEP options that are coming down the pipeline, there's a range of exciting um, uh, options, including uh, microbicides, vaginal rings, the recently um, uh, the the depriverine ring that recently received a positive scientific review by the European Medicines Agency and recommendation by the WHO and hopefully um, is being reviewed um, and will soon be available for women in sub-Saharan Africa. We also know that three monthly rings are under development and this is an exciting platform in that it has the potential for multi-purpose use to include protection from contraception and sexually transmitted infection. We also saw exciting data coming through from the long acting injectable uh, carbotegravir that is administered every two months. And we, we saw data of high effectiveness in cis men, transgender women, and cis women in Sub-Saharan Africa. Additionally, we hear of lenacapavir that's under development and will be able to be provided every six months. And even more encouragingly are implants that are being developed that can be administered and be um, used uh, for up to one year at a given time. Also our long acting pills like his latrovir that can be administered uh, and um, have extended effect over one month. And we also have monoclonal uh, antibodies also known as broadly neutralizing antibodies. And again, the desired goal is to have long acting uh, VNABs uh, that are effective uh, and can be administered every three to six months, for example, administered subcutaneously and have the potential for lower toxicity compared to the ARV uh, based PrEP options. And of course, the cost of goods needs to be um, reviewed in the context of VNABs. Finally, the development of a safe and effective HIV vaccine remains a critical component of our HIV prevention toolbox. In addition to all the tools that are currently available, I think it is critical for us to have an HIV vaccine that will help us um, be able to control and reach a sustainable end of this epidemic. When we're looking at uh, uh, the desired target uh, product profile of the HIV vaccine. Um, we're looking at a vaccine that would have long lasting protection, if possible, um, uh, bringing uh, lifelong protection. Um, ideally, of course, it would be addressing the adherence challenges uh, that have come up uh, repeatedly when we are looking at other prevention tools and really looking at a product that has potential to protect the widest range of populations that are at risk. Additionally, you'd want a vaccine that has few doses, that has a favorable cold chain to be able to be widely rolled out in low and middle income countries and has cross clade protection to be able to protect against the strains that are circulating globally. In conclusion, the HIV epidemic remains a significant global challenge. The HIV epidemic is very diverse on a global level with regional differences in both vulnerable populations as well as incidents. 
And whilst we have a diverse HIV prevention toolbox, we continue to see challenges in rollout, uptake and persistence. And we have learned some important lessons from existing prevention tools that must be applied to the development of future generation products. And as we're developing these products, we need to be informed by populations uh, that are in need so that we ensure uh, uh, products that are appropriate for the context where the products will ultimately be used. In closing, I'd like to acknowledge the broad range of stakeholders, researchers, organizations, and participants that take part in the development of, uh, in the continuing development of HIV prevention tools. And I would like to acknowledge the generous support that is provided by major donors that work, make the work that we do in IAVI possible. Thank you.